Welcome back to another game design and implementation video. This will likely be the last one for the year and possibly for quite a while. Today we will discuss the theory, design and implementation of a relatively important but usually uncovered topic in games, that being ballistic equations. Now this topic is generally quite important as it dictates the flight path of many objects in games, but it's not really one of those things that are taught in game design directly for obvious reasons. So when we talk about ballistics, we are really just describing how objects move in space and time with respect to a gravitational body. The equations themselves are an extension of our understanding of Newtonian physics and basic trigonometry. The actions of, say, throwing a ball or putting a satellite into orbit are in many ways very similar, but these instances need not just be man-made. The water that jets from a fountain or statue display also obeys the laws of physics, and the arc or trajectory is something that we can observe, measure, and predict. Ballistics have been an important part of our history, particularly concerning Warcraft, where long-range weapons are concerned, even if our understanding of them at the time was incomplete. From bows and arrows to blunderbusses, siege weapons to cannons, our understanding of ballistics has grown significantly. Some would say it has been perfected with the advent of chambered rifling in modern ballistic weapons, with instances such as mass artillery used in, say, the First World War, providing suitable evidence of its accuracy and impact on how we conduct modern-day warfare. A good example of this perfection would be the use of fire bases in Vietnam, where artillery batteries provided accurate artillery shielding to US forces from across the visible horizon, which is an impressive feat. These days we can calculate how far, how high, and even how long it takes for ballistic projectiles to land given certain real-world variables and constants. So, given the nature of games and their tendency to mimic reality, it is not surprising to see ballistics used for all manner of reasons in games. Game engines often attempt to simulate Newtonian physics with varying degrees of success, usually stripping information such as atmospheric pressure, wind, and altitude to make things just a little bit easier. Older, more traditional games such as Artillery Wars clones make use of many a standard ballistic equation, and were interesting games to program for their time. Many modern games make use of ballistic equations as well, with obvious examples such as Angry Birds, World of Tanks, and even the Battlefield series. However, even such games as World of Warcraft, or even fighting games like Street Fighter, use ballistic equations to drive many of their mechanics, particularly concerning projectiles and juggle physics. Why, you may ask? Well, the physics engines of games can be notoriously buggy sometimes, often updating later than expected or out of sync with the game's frame rate. Certain game mechanics can be separated from physics engines to allow for more consistent and predictable behavior, instead of relying on forces or collision events in the game. This is particularly important in games of a competitive nature that require all networked instances to have the same predictable game object traversals. So, the formulas used for ballistic equations are derived from both hundreds of years of field tests and experiments, alongside mankind's general understanding of mathematics and physics. The driving properties of ballistic equations stem from our understanding of trigonometry and how angles and dimensions of triangles can be determined by the properties of sine, cosine, and tangent. Our understanding of these properties is typically partnered with an understanding of circular geometry, as angles are often better expressed in a format relative to a full unit of measure. This measure is known as pi with a full circle being of circumference 2 pi. 
Another unit of measure regarding circles is called a radian, which is simply the length of the radius of a circle stretched over the circumference, giving us a circumferential length that translates into an angle, or vice versa. Without diving into this too much, it's important to know that the ballistic equations are derived with the purpose of converting angles into radians, as that is what your typical sine, cos and tan calculations require. So, just a bit of background on what a radian is, is therefore necessary. Typically, the majority of the standard ballistic equations will take into consideration an initial velocity, trajectory angle, and gravitational pull, and combine them in various ways to deduce useful information from them, given our understanding of said described trigonometric relationships. For example, the standard displacement formula probably the most useful for real-time ballistic implementations, is set up to provide a parabolic curve given said properties and their expected angular relationships. The constant of gravity and the lack of atmospheric pressure is what typically makes projectile displacement using this ballistic equation incredibly accurate. The rest is used in a manner that mathematically models what we have observed and what trigonometry dictates. However, from this we can calculate other useful information as well, such as how high the projectile will go, how far the projectile will land from the firing point, and even how long it will take. This understanding is how we have made such accurate and reliable artillery systems today in real life, as, even with the issue of an atmosphere, our calculations do not defy the laws of physics, namely, again, gravity. So you can generally find these equations littered across the internet in various forms, some incredibly unhelpful and unnecessarily complicated. So for your convenience, I have uploaded some of them for your manipulation in a document accompanying this package. Today I will show you briefly how to implement the displacement formula in Unity in 3D and how to correct for perceived problems. One of the first issues that students run into when implementing ballistic equations is that they confuse the x and y displacement of the formula with that of a game's coordinate system. Now this would be fine if we always fired a projectile from 0, 0 every time, particularly in say a two-dimensional game. However, in a 3D game where we are firing a mortar off the back of a ute going southeast down a hill at 50 kilometers per hour, this application breaks down. So to make this as straightforward as possible, we need to disconnect the X and Y displacement completely from the game's coordinate system. Simply put, they are not the same. All the X and Y displacement is, is simply the distance from the firing point which you control and measure, and the current height of the projectile, which is what you adjust. This system is two-dimensional and completely separate from coordinate space. Done correctly, you can fire a projectile facing any direction, and the formula simply controls the height of the projectile against the distance it has moved from the point of origin. Your projectile moves at a speed, typically the velocity it is allocated. In your game, that means it moves forward. It therefore simply moves up or down in height slightly based on the ballistic equation controlling its elevation. This really means that the only variable we need to care about is how far the projectile is away from the origin, or firing point. And we can measure this in Unity using a simple vector3.distance call, provided we account for Pythagoras' theorem. Once we have the x displacement, we calculate the y displacement and adjust the height of the projectile. And that is really all there is to it. We don't need to convert 2D coordinate space to 3D coordinate space using matrix calculations or anything ridiculously complex. We just adjust the height of the projectile and presto, ballistics. So this is what the example should look like in c -sharp. Take note here the calculations made regarding the X displacement, as well as the additional consideration made for an origin point. 
which we can move anywhere in the world at any time. With a bit of work, you can easily end up with a game that looks a bit like the following. This example is a mortar tower capable of shooting ballistic projectiles separate from the physics engine at trajectories dictated by velocity, firing angle and gravity. The projectiles it fires moves using the code you just observed. There is an additional separate system used for creating a projectile path uh, and this uses a line renderer useful for I guess aiming correctly. You will notice that this system makes use of the physics engine but the projectiles and the aiming ridicule line up perfectly. So this whole project is actually available for your viewing pleasure provided in the description link. So these kind of problems may seem daunting from a design and implementation point of view usually stemming from the theory surrounding the topics and not so much the game mechanics themselves. What you may find to be the most confusing part of implementing ballistics in games is not so much the equations, but how they translate to working in a game, particularly in 3D. Sometimes this just requires you to take a step back and analyse what it is that you are actually adjusting here. In this case, you are not manipulating the exact coordinate position positioning of an object, just applying some changes to its current positioning. Once you realize that, everything becomes much more simple, as it should be.